In this video, I'll share several games running directly from my GameCube, all captured with really high quality. I'll start talking about the GameCube and its console generation, then I'll explain how I captured the gameplay footage featured in the video, and then finally I'll show you lots of gameplay captures. Uh, let me introduce you to a new baby. <laughs> So regarding the GameCube, it's a 6th generation console that was released in 2001 and it was Nintendo's first console to use discs. But it didn't use a regular disc format, it used a proprietary mini DVD system. And the console itself is quite compact and also quite sturdy. As you can see, my GameCube really took a beating from its previous owner, but it still works perfectly. The GameCube controller has a very weird shape, but it is very ergonomic. I find it super comfortable to use, and I love its L and R buttons, which feature both an analog segment as well as a proper digital button to press. But both the digital directional pad as well as the right analog stick, the C button, in my opinion, could have been better. And even though the GameCube has great games in its library, it wasn't a success during its era. The Dreamcast sold about 9 million units, and it was discontinued by Sega. The GameCube sold about 20 2 million units, the Xbox sold about 24 million units, and the PlayStation 2 was a huge success and it sold around 155 million units. It's quite impressive, by the way, that the first Xbox, Microsoft's first video game console, managed to sell more units than the GameCube. In regards to the equipment I used for this video, my GameCube is the model DOL001, which is the one with the digital AV out port. This model is able to output an extremely clean image, and I paired it with a Carby in order to get high quality HDMI output. It's worth noting, by the way, that this signal is even better, even cleaner than the Wii's output. Not by much. Using the Wii with a good component cable also gives great results, but it's impressive that the GameCube had such a great video output. I sent the HDMI out from the GameCube via Carby to the HDMI in of my RetroTINK 4K, and then I had the RetroTINK 4K scale the image from 480 to 4K. And then I captured the gameplay footage with an AverMedia GC573 in 4K60. And I highly recommend you watch this video in 4K, because then YouTube allocates both a better codec as well as a higher bitrate to the 4K content. And one last thing I'd like to mention that is very important for this video is the fact that the GameCube is a console from the analog era, which means that its games were developed with CRT displays in mind, and CRT displays blend adjacent pixels, creating the perception of more resolution and colors. But what you will see in this video are raw, crisp pixels. The footage in this video doesn't represent how games looked back when the GameCube was Nintendo's main console, it's just an interesting experiment to see how a console from more than 20 years ago looks nowadays in modern displays. And now let's get to the subscribe button, please subscribe if you like it, and now let's get to the games. I'll start with one of the best games in the platform, at least in my opinion. This is Mario Kart Double Dash. This game is lots of fun and it's the best Mario Kart along with Mario Kart 8 in my opinion. What makes this game unique, so special, is the fact that we control not one but two characters and characters in this game have access to special items. So Birdo and Yoshi, for example, have access to a giant egg that not only is homing but also drops items such as mushrooms, bananas and stars once it breaks. 
Both Koopa Troopa and Paratroopa get access to a special triple shell combo and so on. This game has an amazing sense of speed since the tracks are narrower than normal and also because when we get hit by an item, we don't completely stop. We normally just lose a little bit of speed, so the game ends up being super fast paced. I don't find the controls as refined as in more modern Mario Kart games in this version, but the game does control well. What I find weird is that when we turn, I feel that the cart also gets pushed a bit to the opposite side of the turn. The game has lots of unlockables and features a special cup called All Cup Tour, which includes all tracks in a single championship. And that cup is super tough, especially in mirrored mode, but winning it in the mirrored mode unlocks the gold cart. As you probably can tell, I love this game and I highly recommend it. One of the best remakes of all time is this one, Resident Evil Remake. absolutely loved the first Resident Evil and this remake is awesome, not only upgrading graphics and presentation, but also bringing high quality new content to the game, such as new areas and new enemies. It looked amazing back when it was released, but unfortunately it doesn't support progressive scan in the GameCube version, but still it, it looks awesome. I find the character models and reflections quite impressive for the time and as someone who has played and finished both the first version of Resident Evil and its remake around the time when the games were released, I find both games amazing and I actually recommend both because they have their own quirks and complement each other really well. Where did they go? With the original game setting the foundations of the franchise and the remake making some good changes, making the game less cringy and, as I already said, bringing extra content, as well as some nice twists that break expectations of those who played the original game. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Still in regards to Resident Evil, the GameCube was the first platform in which Resident Evil 4 was released. I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. ¿Qué carajo estás haciendo aquí? Lárgate, cabrón! Sorry to have bothered you. This is the game in which the franchise left tank controls and tried an action-adventure approach instead of focusing on survival horror. <laughs> I'm a big fan of most games of the franchise and I really enjoyed RE4, but I know a lot of fans were unhappy with the route taken by the franchise and I understand the sentiment since fighting a few zombies in a mansion feels very different than facing hordes of enemies in an open area. In regards to graphics, I feel like Resident Evil 4 looks great for its time, but the gameplay definitely feels dated, so I would recommend you try the game via the remake instead of playing the classic versions. Now a franchise that started on the Game Boy, but a lot of people played it for the first time on the Nintendo 64. This is Wave Race, actually, this specifically is Wave Race Blue Storm, which is an awesome jet ski racing game. It features different racers, each with their own stats, and it controls really well, but it can get quite hard depending on the track and difficulty mode. especially once the game puts the tracks that you just memorized in reverse. And you gotta learn them all again. The 
game features amazing graphics, including beautiful reflections and also an impressive weather system and water simulation. Some tracks even shift from lap to lap because of the changing water levels. Personally, I still prefer Wave Race 64, but this is also an amazing game and I would love to see Nintendo bring the franchise back. And here's a really good licensed game, Simpsons Hit and Run. This game is basically a Simpsons version of Grand Theft Auto. And it's filled with references and Easter eggs of The Simpsons, as well as some gaming criticism. I don't know what they are, but violence is always an appropriate response in the face of the unknown. Graphics are simple but work really, really well for the time. The game features platforming, driving segments, and also as we progress in the game, we unlock new costumes and vehicles. Overall, great game. And here's the first big solo adventure Luigi faced, Luigi's Mansion. This game is super charming and I love its art direction. The graphics look super good. Mm -hmm. And I love the contrast between darkness and brightness because it really imposes a very strong mood for the game. And the gameplay loop is lots of fun. With puzzles to solve, ghosts to hunt, all while we explore the mansion. And now let me show you Zelda Ocarina of Time via the Zelda Collector's Edition, which includes Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and also a Wind Waker demo. To me, this version looks really similar to the one currently available via Nintendo Online for the Switch, since the game runs at a higher resolution when compared to the Nintendo 64 version. Ocarina of Time is obviously one of the best games of all time. It served as an example of how to transition a franchise from 2D to 3D. It also introduced the use of contextual actions via a single button. It has an incredible soundtrack, memorable sound effects, and it still looks good. The GameCube version of the game plays quite well, but I still prefer playing the game with a Nintendo 64 controller. GameCube's own Zelda game is this one, The Wind Waker, and this game is awesome. I remember really wanting to play it, but I didn't have a GameCube back then, so I purchased it as soon as I got my Nintendo Wii. And honestly, I never understood the resistance a lot of people had with its art style. The game has always looked amazing to me, and since it doesn't feature photorealistic graphics, it aged really well. And not only that, but also it sounds amazing. This game soundtrack is a masterpiece. Regarding gameplay, it's lots of fun with lots of exploration, puzzle solving, and combat. I highly recommend it. 
Mario's feature game on the GameCube was Super Mario Sunshine, which I find the least appealing 3D Mario game, especially considering that it came after Mario 64, and Mario 64 still holds up really well. <laughs> But Super Mario Sunshine, it does look great, and it's also super charismatic, both in terms of graphics, as well as presentation, art direction. It's not a bad game, but it's not a, not a good Mario game, in my opinion. Now, a Kojima franchise beloved by many, Metal Gear. This is Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, which, according to the box art, features two of the greatest games of all time fused together. I just recently acquired the game, so I haven't had the chance to properly play it, but I decided to include it in this video because I expected it to look great, and honestly, it does look great. Here's Nintendo's take on Metroid in 3D. This is Metroid Prime. This game has an amazing atmosphere, it feels very mysterious, very eerie. The presentation of this game is really good. The soundtrack is awesome. Visually, it looks great. Metroid Prime is one of the many examples of how great Nintendo is at adapting 2D games to 3D. They did it with Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and more recently with Kirby, when they released Kirby and the Forgotten Land. One aspect of Metroid Prime that feels very dated on the GameCube version are the controls. They are too different compared to what we have now in the industry. So I would recommend you play the Wii version or the remaster on the Switch, because those feel better in regards to control. But overall, yeah, a great game. one of my favorite fighting game franchises. It's uh, Soul Calibur with Soul Calibur 2. The GameCube version of this game features Link as the special character. And this game plays really well, looks amazing. I love its art direction, its soundtrack. I highly recommend it. Star Fox is a franchise that a lot of people love, 
And on the GameCube, we got Star Fox Assault. Also Star Fox Adventures, but I'm not featuring that one. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, regarding Star Fox Assault, as a huge fan of both the first Star Fox and Star Fox 64, I don't find Star Fox Assault neither as engaging nor as charming as the previous games. The flying segments play really well, but the open area ones are not so fun. You gotta change weapons to fit the situation. Use that machine gun to blast the whole lot of box. Looks like you've got more company. No way! I can't shake him! And also I feel like a lot of games from this era suffer from the fact that the extra hardware power made developers add way too many explanations and cutscenes to a lot of games that would have benefited from being more straightforward. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys agree with me, but Star Fox Assault has too many cutscenes. It would have been better with less cutscenes. In regards to graphics, I find the game great, the scenarios are beautiful, there's great variety and the soundtrack sounds awesome. Keep moving, follow him into the atmosphere. Adjust G diffuser system output. Let's go. Now a game that I've been wanting to play since it was released on the Dreamcast, Skies of Arcadia. I just recently got this GameCube version of the game, I don't have the Dreamcast version, so I haven't played it. I just captured a bit of gameplay of the initial cutscene and just a bit of combat for this video. Unfortunately, the game runs only in 480i, but still it, it looks great, has very vibrant colors, expressive characters, soundtrack seems to be really good, so now I really want to play this game. And now a super gimmicky game, this is Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. It's a game that ideally you will play with the Donkey Kong bongos. When you tap right, you go right. When you tap left, you go left. When you tap both drums at the same time, you jump. When you clap, you drop bananas, you can interact with certain items, enemies. The game is fun, it looks great, and despite being very simple, both in terms of gameplay and graphics, I highly recommend it, it's super fun. And now one of the best RPGs in the system, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. This game features a super engaging story, an awesome soundtrack, amazing graphics, but this is the type of game that looks much better with a proper CRT monitor or filter, at least in my opinion. And because this game has a big emphasis on story and I don't want to spoil it to anyone, especially consider it's getting a remake on the Switch, I'm not going to talk a lot about it. That's it. I highly recommend it. Check it out. I also highly recommend you watch my PlayStation 3 showcase. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing. Have an awesome day.